Let's say you go to a page and as you visit the page, it's going to go and make some kind of Ajax request for you. And while the request is taking place, you're going to be met with a loading spinner. Very typical, very common. Now you go to another page. And of course, that other page is also making an Ajax request for you. And once again, you're met with a loading spinner. But here's the problem. When you now go back to the first page, the one that you've already visited, instead of just having the data already available to you just by virtue of the fact that you've already visited this page, instead, you're now met with another loading spinner. So now this, of course, can be very, very annoying. The good news is, however, it's actually very, very easy to mitigate. Let me show you exactly how. So here on screen right now, you can see that we have a very simple React application. And here inside of the app component, I'm defining two routes. So the first one is going to take me to the home page. And then the second one is going to take me to the single repository page. So let's first visit the home page and see what it does. So very simply in the use effect of this home page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make an Ajax request to my local node server. So essentially, I built up my own little node express server, which is wrapping the GitHub API. And then what I'm doing is I'm making a request to my all repos endpoint. And then what it's going to do for me is it's going to get me back all of the repositories that I have under my coding with Chaim username. When this request is fired off, I show this loading spinner. To, I set the loading spinner to true. I made the request. When it's done, I set my loading spinner to false. And then finally, I go ahead and render my sidebar with all of those links, with each one of those links being a name of one of my repositories. Now, when you click on one of those links, it then takes you to the single repository page. Now, when you click on one of those links, what we're actually doing is we're taking the actual repository name and putting it up into the, in the params in the URL. So now when you actually visit the single repository page, I'm going to go ahead and use the use params hook from React Router DOM to actually get that repository name out of the URL, out of the params. And now in this use effect, I'm once again going to do something very simple. I'm basically just going to set my loading spinner to true, and then I'm going to make an Ajax request back off to my node server once again, this time asking it to give me some additional details about this particular repository once again, using the GitHub API to get me those details, passing in the actual repository name. When the request is done, I'm going to set my load into false, set my data on my state, and then finally just go ahead and display that data. But crucially, what you're going to notice here is that inside of this use effect, no matter whether this is your first time or your 100th time visiting this page, the flow is going to be the same. In the use effect, I'm going to go ahead and set loading to true, uh, which means you're then going to have to see some kind of loading animation. I'm then going to make the Ajax request. When it's done, you will then go ahead and set the loading back to false. And then finally, you can see the data instead of the loading animation. So this is, of course, very annoying. Let's see how we can actually do better. And to do this, we're actually going to be using a tool called React Query. OK, so now I've switched branches to the branch that actually has React Query in it. So step one, of course, is you would have to install the TanStack React Query library. So of course, you can just go to your terminal. You can type in npmi at TanStack React Query. And then once you have that, what we're going to do is we're going to import the query client as well as the query client provider. And this is going to be happening at the root of your application, which in my case is inside of the app component. Now, besides for actually importing the query client and the query client provider, what we then do is we create an instance of the query client by calling new query clients. So now we actually have an instance of this query client. Finally, what we do is we actually wrap our entire application. So here you can see I'm wrapping my entire browser router from React Router DOM. I'm going to be wrapping it with the query client provider component. And then it accepts a prop called client to which we then pass our newly instantiated query client that we just created right up over here. So now let's see the most important difference that's going to be taking place now that we have React Query. Coming back to our single repository page, one of the first noticeable differences that you're going to be seeing right now is that number one, there's no use effect. Number two, you're going to see we no longer have a use state that's going to be managing the loading state. Previously, we were actually managing loading state ourselves. If you remember, I had set loading true, set loading false. Now that's actually gone. And another very important thing is you now see that we have this hook called a uh, use get single repo. So let's visit this hook and see what it actually does. So here now you can see that I've got a function called get repo, which accepts a repo name. And then this is the one that actually makes the uh, Ajax request down to my server, yada, yada, yada. You've seen this before, nothing too exciting here. Let's then look at this hook here called use get single query. And then all it does is it does a use query call. So we actually import the use query hook from the actual React query library. And then what we do is we actually pass in a key. So the first argument to use query is essentially going to be a key. So the idea here is that we essentially have this cache that React query is going to be building up for us. It's a key value here. The key can be whatever you decide. And then the value is going to be whatever you essentially assigned to that particular key. And the syntax that React query uses to build up your keys is this array syntax here. So the first argument that you pass to use query is going to be an array. And this can basically be an array of strings. And of course, you can also use variable names as your strings. And then what it's going to do is it's going to serialize it all together to create one cohesive key. So here what we're doing is we're essentially saying, give me 
a new key called repo, and then to that, serialize to that as well, the individual repository name. So for example, if I'm visiting my WebRTC repository, it's gonna take the name of that repository, append that to repo, that becomes one individual key. If I then visit my Sakarayo stuff, that becomes a separate key, and then so on and so forth. And then finally, what it does is it actually calls my get repo function that I've defined right over here, and then whatever this get repo function returns will get returned to me as part of this use queries return value as well. So if we then come back into the single repository component now, you can see that I can simply call the get use or the use get single repository hook, passing to it the actual repository name that I've pulled out of my params. And now here's what's actually very cool. I get the data, which is going to actually have the underlying data that was given to me by this get repo function right over here. And also another very nice thing that it gives me is it gives me the is loading variable and it's going to automatically set it to true or false. Meaning previously, I myself had to manage whether or not loading was set to true or set to false. Now React Query is actually gonna be doing that for me automatically. But here comes the best part. Let's run this application now and see how suddenly now, once I've already visited a page once, when I go back to it, there's no more loading spinners. Let me show you. So now we're back in the browser and here on the left sidebar, you can see that I've got all the repositories by name that are under my coding with Chaim username. Now let's go and click on this Lambda one. And as you can see, we see loading spinner and then it shows me stars. This one doesn't have any stars, which is why it's blank. Let's now go to the boilerplate starter. Same thing, we see a loading spinner, stars are blank again. But now here comes the kicker. If I now go back to the Lambda REST API one, the one that I just previously visited a second ago, where before I saw a loading spinner, now when I click on it, there's no loading spinner. And the reason for that is very simply. React Query actually cached the data for me, which means that now when I go and visit it, instead of having to make the request again, it just reads it out of the cache and then no more loading spinners. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, I've got an entire playlist full of React goodness. You can find that playlist somewhere right over here.